you know, there's a lot of things that you can do to customize your flip over shelter. You know, some people call it tricking your trap and I really enjoy all the messages and the pictures people send, you know, just the different things that they come up with and things that they do with their flip over shelters. Now, one thing to consider is weight. If you're using this behind an ATV, a side-by-side -side, or a snowmobile, you know, you could add a lot more weight. In fact, they'll actually tow better with weight. You know, put your runner kit on, put your Hyfax runner kits and your tow bars, you know, if you're going to be doing a lot of long distance traveling, you know, with the machine. But if you have to drag it by hand or if you have to make a lot of small moves once you disconnect from your machine, then you got to really be conscientious of the weight. And so a lot of times I like to be pretty nimble. I like to travel pretty lightweight. So I keep things pretty simple on the inside of my shelter. But one thing I do a lot of is just use these clam crates to organize my gear. And so I'll have a clam crates, for example, batteries, maybe a gas can for an auger, uh, tackle boxes, put a propane tank in another crate, but you just use your crates. That way you can, you can, you can remove your stuff out of it at night when you, you know, when you unload your gear, you put your Vexlar in the crate. But uh, I use the crates a lot. The other thing too is, you know, LED lights, you know, even if you have an older fish trap, you know, they sell these bar kits where you can just clamp it right onto that top bar. You never have to worry about breaking lanterns or breaking globes and uh, really slick, just runs right off of a Vexlar battery. And, you know, probably the biggest thing though is just keeping it simple. I mean, you can put magnetic tool holders, you can put rod holders, you can mount all kinds of different things in here. But at the end of the day, you know, the more stuff that you have in here, the more it's going to weigh. And so that's something to be conscious of. The other thing to be conscious of is if you're going to be dragging it across the ice, especially long distances, you know, rough, you know, rough ice, whether you're up on Lake of the Woods or Lake Winnipeg, is that the stuff that's back here is going to take an absolute beating. Okay. And so if you're going to have your rods back in your fish trap when you're towing, make sure that they're in a hard fish, you know, in a, in a hard case, make sure that, you know, your electronics are taken care of. I mean, I've been out on, you know, hard packed ice and snow on Lake Winnipeg, for example, where I mean, your tackle boxes just get destroyed where the paint's off your jigs. I mean, it just, everything takes a lot of abuse back here getting towed behind the machine. And so a lot of times I like to keep my electronics on my machine. I like to take my tackle, keep that on the machine and just put things back here that can take that abuse. You know, heaters, propane tanks, you know, uh, some tackle boxes, but, uh, you know, definitely be conscientious of that. But uh, tell you what, you know, if you rig these up properly, you know, you, you can use these for many years and have, you know, a lot of great fishing experiences out of them. And it seems like no matter who buys it, they all rig it up a little bit differently, you know, to each their own.